Okay, great stuff. Um, uh, so, Joe, we just wanted to ask you about um, headlines like this. Uh, this is from the Indo on Monday. Uh, freak polar vortex threatens coldest winter in 50 years. Uh, and if you look down through the copy, um, Met Erin warned that it's still too early to make such exact predictions, although the immediate forecast is for icy weather into late December. Uh, James Madden of exactoweather.com said that in a worst case scenario, Ireland is looking at a big freeze that will rival the icy winter of 1963. Uh, what do you make, make of uh, headlines like this uh, and outfits like, like exacto weather? We see these crop up from time to time. We do. There's a number of very active um forecast producers, we might call them in a generic sense, in particularly in the UK, but there are also in other countries. And the only exact thing about exact weather is you can rely on them to come out with this sort of story every winter, usually a little earlier than this. They usually come out late October, early November. The fact is, there's absolutely no way we know what the weather is going to be like in January. We in Mid and look at the most meteorologically scientifically sound predictions and we do have them up to about a month ahead but they're in the research arena there and even at that we know there's virtually no skill in them over Ireland. Uh, anybody who thinks they can forecast for January from the middle of December is deluding themselves and quite frankly it's uh, it's a bit depressing and, and it's certainly unnecessary to have this sort of scary headline put on, on an article because it's there is absolutely no sense in that particular story and there's nothing scientifically to back it up whatsoever. Mm. And, and presumably when you, you get calls and people might be working on this sort of story, a, a forecaster in, in Glasnevin will probably you know, advise them to stay away from that sure. sort of thing. Does it annoy you when people go through and, and do publish those sort of things? Well, the media is the media and it has its own uh, dynamic, I suppose. But yes, it does because, you know, when I started doing weather forecasting, which is over 30 years ago now, our ability to forecast even two or three days ahead was very ropey and the people who came before me like Paddy McHugh and that who some more older people might remember, uh, you know, they, they were really brave going out there with two and three day forecasts because the skill level was very poor. So scientifically we've improved vastly in the last de few decades, mainly because of computer power and because of better use of satellite information and so on. Um, so, and yet, you know, despite this tremendous improvement in what we might call the scientifically valid forecast, there's been this rise of pseudo-scientific forecasting, and it's more or less in the last five to ten years. To some extent it's because of the internet and because anybody who puts up a blog or a website and it's not that expensive to do so and put, could put out their story there. And if it's uh, a story which has legs, you know, the traditional media will pick it up and run with it because I suppose it's all about making sure that uh, you've got the story, if other people have the story, and I understand that, uh, but it is a little bit depressing. Okay, great. We'll leave it there. Thanks again, John. Thank you.